What's up guys, my name is Josh, and uh, today we're gonna be taking a trip down memory lane. Far past my memory, actually. Um, I'm, I'm about 23 years old. This headphone is just about as old as I am. This is a Sennheiser HD 600. It's kind of known as a, a studio headphone, a reference headphone. Um, and it's been around for about 20 years. Now, as old as that is, 20 years before that, this headphone came out. The SE405 by Pioneer. Came out about 1974. So today, I'm gonna review this. So first of all, what are these and why am I reviewing them? These were actually designed to be closed back studio monitors. So I'm reviewing them partly out of curiosity on my own and partly just to see kind of how far we've come in the past 40 years. This was was very interesting to me personally. I'm hoping that some of you at least find this interesting as well. Now real quick, I want to uh, give a quick shout out to the nice man named Dan, a friend of mine who dropped this off, um, as well as a couple other items that I will be reviewing soon. So <laughs> let's go ahead and handle this like any other review, starting with build. So this is a fairly heavy closed back headphone. Uh, it probably weighs approximately like a pound. It's got a non-removable coiled cable that terminates on the left side, and that ends in a uh, quarter inch termination here. Now this headphone is primarily made of metal and leather. This black piece feels like metal, but covered in like a layer of leather. Uh, the headband is definitely leather. The pads are definitely leather. Overall, very, very solid construction. For these to have been made in Japan, in the 70s, shipped over to America, sold, and lasted this long with the original cable and still play with the original box that we still have. And playing as well as they do without any channel imbalances is kind of a feat on its own. And that's not really the build quality you expect with a lot of modern things. So that that's really impressive. Um, you have your left and right designated sides, of course. Now, one interesting thing that I found kind of odd, and I only have a, a, a slight prediction as to why, is the fact that there's a volume knob on both sides. There's a all the way down and all the way up or kind of full tilt, full access to the right and the left. And I haven't seen this on any other headphone ever. Um, and I, I would assume, I'm not a studio engineer, but I would assume one of two things. One being, if you were listening to this and you just wanted to, instead of taking the headphone off on one side, you just lower the volume off, or perhaps that old school amplifiers had imbalances in them and you wanted to correct that with a physical dial on the actual headphones. Now I don't have any verification for either, but those would just be my two predictions. If you actually know the reason why they did this, I'd love to hear it in the comment section down below. Um, and I'll make sure to pin your comment so everyone else can see it too. Now for build quality, this has obviously stood the test of time. So it's gonna get a passing grade for me. It's a little heavy um, and it is over ear technically, but it actually feels more like a uh, hybrid between over ear and on ear. I have smaller ears. So if you had larger ears, these probably would definitely feel like an on ear. Um, but the, the cups are pretty shallow and the pads squish down quite a bit. But everything on this headphone seems really, really well built, even the cable. Um, so I'm really impressed. Now I do wanna talk about price points actually. Uh, originally, from everything that I can find online because it's very hard for me to find any legitimate information that is linked to a credible source, these started about $80 when they were new back in 74, which in today's market would actually put it about $450. So back in the day, these were not a cheap headphone. And these were a medium to high end headphone if I was gonna go based off of the price and the build quality. I mean, even back then, and this is a thick, well-built headphone, even by today's standards, which is just incredible. Now, normally I would talk about the power requirements um, and I've seen a few things saying that they're like 80 ohm or 20 ohm and they have a sensitivity level of like 104 dB. And I just saw that on a chat forum, so I don't know how correct that is. In practice though, these are actually really, really easy to drive. I drove them off of a phone, off of other amplifiers, and it was no problem at all. So you don't really need a lot of power, but it's not like you're probably gonna be picking up a pair of these. But if you were curious, they're pretty efficient. Okay, now let's go ahead and jump into sound. And pretty much everything that I've heard from the 70s music-wise sounds like how this headphone sounds like. You've got this kind of compressed sound to everything. You don't have these crazy large dynamics. And you also don't have this crazy deep bass, nor do you have these incredible crystalline highs. You've got this weird overlay or, or kind of like a film over the, the entire sound. The treble is smooth, but not particularly sparkly. Um, it's not really bright on this headphone, which is a, a plus in my opinion. So it's got a pretty soft top end and that kind of continues down into the upper mid range. Now the mid range is something that this headphone definitely seems to lean towards. Now regarding frequencies, the mid range is actually the best place for this headphone. They seem the least veiled. 
um, and they actually do take a little bit of a step forward. Although I would have liked to see a little bit more presence from vocalists, although that's not there and that's kind of, you know, my own thing. I really like vocal heavy music. Now the mid range, it's not particularly resolving. It doesn't seem to have this extreme clarity. It does have this kind of trait smoothness and a little bit step forward from bass and treble, although not extremely close, um, but definitely not a very wide headphone either uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Now, when you get down to bass, that's where things start to get kind of, uh, well, not that great. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're not a bassy headphone at all, like at all all. Below 150 hertz, they basically have nothing. I mean, you can hear the bass, but you do not feel it. In the mid bass, there is no impact. There is no visceralness to the bass response. And that pretty much sounds how most of the music that came out of the 70s sounds like. It's just this almost like complete lack of sub bass. Now this could be caused by a number of things. It could be caused by maybe this wasn't in fashion, you know, deep bass response just wasn't a thing. Possibly also not really having the instruments to create it. Although I feel like guitars are capable of pretty deep bass and those were definitely around then. So I'm not sure. It could have been a number of factors or any one factor. And like I said before, if you know more about this, please leave it in the comments and educate us all. This is not an educational video. I'm just reviewing this headphone for fun. Now, tonally, this headphone actually isn't bad. Uh, everything is slightly compressed and does sound a little bit muffled to it, but it does have warm and bright tones and it's capable of switching between the two fairly easily. And it doesn't seem to have an overall strong influence of flavor to it, which I imagine is part of the reason why back in the day, this was the studio monitors. You wanted sort of a, a neutrality factor to that. And still to this day, this does surprisingly offer that, which is kind of strange. Now, one thing this headphone is actually really, really good at is imaging. This isn't a particularly wide headphone or is it extremely narrow, it's kind of right in the middle, but the imaging is just super, super tight. And, and it's honestly comparable to most of today's headphones. I'm not really exaggerating. So, you know, even though this is 40 years ago when this is made, this headphone doesn't sound completely foreign to today's headphones. It's not that far behind. Yeah, I mean, it, it is behind, obviously. We've updated our driver technology. We know a little bit more about the acoustics of a chamber and stuff and putting that into practice obviously results in a better sounding headphone. I'm not saying this is comparable to nowadays, but I am saying that it's not like way back there. It's kind of like right behind you, you know, and I'm not sure if this is a kind of a cool thing or kind of a depressing thing about audio because it makes you realize like most other industries 40 years ago are just completely bypassed by modern technology. You know, cars are, just so ahead of what they were 40 years ago in terms of technology, reliability, speed, maybe not cool factor, but you get my point, you know, TVs are just light years ahead of what they used to be 40 years ago. 40 years ago, we didn't even have the possibility for me to do this. There was no internet 40 years ago. So considering the fact that this doesn't sound that far behind modern technology, you know, it's kind of cool, but it's also kind of like, wow, I wish we would have made a little bit more progress than, than just these tiny little increments here and there. Anyways, I think that's gonna wrap this up into the conclusion. Is this like a headphone that I recommend going out and purchase even though it's old? Eh, not really. I mean, it's kind of a cool collector's item if you really care, if you, you know, maybe you're a huge pioneer fan or you just like old headphones or whatever, you can find these on the used market anywhere between like 50 to 200 bucks usually. Something that maybe like a, a really like a headphone aficionado or a collector might want to pick up. But other than that, do I recommend it for the sound quality? Not really. I mean, it was a fun experience and that's all it really was, was just an experience and an experiment just to see how far we've come, which is surprisingly not that far. I mean, we've we've gone somewhere, but, but not very far. All right guys, I hope uh, some of you enjoyed taking a trip down memory lane with me. And uh, if you like this video, you know what to do. Subscribe, I do new videos. Uh, well, actually this week, I'm kind of doing them every other day, but uh, normally I do every day. So subscribe if you're into it. Uh, Patreon, if you support what I do and you like what I do on this channel. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.